Bonjour, buenos dias, magandang umaga. Welcome to my Chamber of Chakras and thank you for joining me on another episode of Astro Affirmation for May 15, 2024. And it's the peak of the week. Yes, Wednesday again, peeps. Yes, Wednesday was named after Woden, the sky god. And boy, the heavens are covered in a thick blanket of clouds this morning. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a fog, especially from this cold and flu that I'm fighting. Yes, Wednesday, the messenger god Mercury rules with Woden. This eponymous day, Miércoles, is the word for Wednesday in Spanish and Tagalog, the Filipino language. Yeah, so Mercury, the planet of communication and short distance travel influences us to express our true selves effectively and efficiently by optimizing the energy of the throat chakra, which rules the day. So here at the top, of the week. We review where we've been and clarify where we want to go from here. To what end are you doing what you're doing? Choose which way to go next. You know, going towards your final destination, right? Wednesday woos us to express our emotions and share our ideas with others. Show and tell the people you love how you feel. Yes, say I love you, I love you. Yes, with more than words. Saying I love you is not enough to make me feel something, something anyway. We are multi-dimensional spiritual beings in physical form. I say multi-dimensional because we have a spinal cord that's powered by a beam of light, right? In the core of our being that connects us to earth and sky. Right? Here's another visual. See that central column of light in the middle connects us to earth and sky. Each of us human beings have a central column of light that's composed of seven vortices, right? Portals. These vortices transport us to different dimensions, right? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, seven dimensions, and even up here and down there still, okay? Starting with the primary chakras. First, the root linking our being to earth, right? The sacral to water, solar plexus to fire, the heart to air, the throat to the ether, the substance of space, the third eye to the light dimension, and then the crown to the spiritual dimension, right? Going up to the spirit in the sky, spirit in the sky, that's where I'll go when I die, when I die. When I die and they lay me to rest, I'm going to go to the place that's the best. Yeah, I love that song by Norman Greenbaum, released in 1969. 1969, that was the year that my baby brother, Alexis Pena Goko, a.k.a. Katanic Panic, was born. Yes, Alex died in 2022 at the age 53, which reduces when you add the two numbers five plus three it reduces to eight my life number right and eight is the number of completion new beginnings and salvation i believe alexis was saved 
finished the race and made a new start. Yeah, he broke down and eternity broke through. You know what I mean? I feel him with me, especially when I remember his person, the creative genius that he was. I, I miss him, mostly on gloomy days like this. R.I.P. Alexis, I love you. Yeah, you know, we all take our turns in the revolving door of death and life, don't we? Yes, we do. We are spirit inhabiting this slight soma, this fragile body, to experience the fullness of life for a limited time only. After this timeline, we move on. Hopefully, upward, continue to be a part of the whole of creation. Yes, each one of us are members of the same body. Yes, eternal drops from the same celestial cloud, you dig? Yes, we are one. So let's sing our theme song. Ready? singing to the beat of David's drum. And now, let's have some coffee talk. You go grab a cuppa and let's spill some tea. Yes. So how goes it, everybody? How are y'all doing? I'm sleepy and hungry. Yes, the Taurus that I am. But we are at the tail end of Taurus season, right? Here's the glyph and here's my original drawing that I designed for the astrological sign of Taurus. You see how Taurus exalts the moon. So I made the horn of the bull in the shape of a crescent moon. Yes, the sign of the bull, exalting the moon, ruled by Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, and pleasure. But right now, the moon, hi Luna, is in its first quarter phase, aka half moon. So we're approaching the full moon, right? So the half moon would be this. It's in the shape of a D, right? When you look up at the sky tonight, you'll see it looks like the letter D. The first quarter moon phase is the third phase of the moon cycle. And it's a time to act. It's a time to commit. A time to decide. Okay? Act, commit, decide. Joshua 24, verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, big blue household, we will serve the Lord. Yes, that's in the Bible. So in five days, May 20th, begins Gemini season, the sign of the twins, right? Balancing polarities in duality. So prepare yourselves by equalizing your dual nature, right? We are both physical and spiritual in nature. Balance those two. Get your gears on neutral and coast because it's all downhill from here, folks. Yes, take the middle way. Yes, here's my visual for the middle way. Christ consciousness. And be good. That's good right there in the middle. Not too high, not too low, not too hot or too cold. Just right. Stay in the Goldilocks zone to avoid burning out or freezing over. Know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Maintain a safe distance from the extremes of life. You know, here's another visual. I drew this and I call it the wheel of life, right? It has its ups and downs. When it rolls along your journey, so stay in the hub, the center of the wheel, so you can move forward standing still. You know, you don't have to do anything. You just sit there in the middle. You dig? Because see, if you're at the perimeter of the wheel of life, you will experience extreme highs and lows as a wheel of life turns, right? to go forward and upward. But at the center, at the magic circle, the origin of creation, the zero point singularity of consciousness, you'll be constantly moving forward and upward with no sweat. No sweat. Easy peasy. Yeah. I'm reminded of Papa's cancerous mass in his lung. <clears throat> please, please pray that it has not metastasized so that it can be removed and Papa can be cancer free. Yeah, because he wants to live until he's 105. So he's got to be healthy if he's going to live that long, you know. But thank you for praying. But yeah, he texted me, Papa texted me, and he said, cancer is the number one killer. Well, I say fear is the number one killer. Because when you are afraid of something or someone, you invest your emotions and your thoughts, right? But your emotions go in one or two ways, anger, or panic. Either way, your ugly comes out. And ooh, ooh, I could be fugly. Anger turns into hatred when fury rages, right? While panic leads to confusion and a nervous breakdown. So what is the opposite of fear? Faith. Faith is the opposite of fear. Faith in God, that he has our backs and he has our best interest at heart. The sacred heart of Jesus, the unconditional love of God in Jesus Christ who paid the price and sacrifice. Yes, 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 y'all. See here, I made the fulcrum of this teeter-totter 
in the shape of a heart, okay? Right? Just like the fulcrum of the seven chakras is the heart chakra of love and compassion, right? Below the heart are three chakras representing our physical nature and above the heart chakra are three chakras also. They're equal in numbers, right? Representing our spiritual nature. And these two sides of us, the physical and spiritual sides of us must be balanced to live a happy and fulfilled life. If I turn it this way, it's like this visual where the heart is in the center, the fulcrum, right? But that's called being centered, right? So this here, teeter-totter, if you want to call it that, with faith on one end and fear on the other, the pivot point is a heart, okay? The right amount of fear protects you, okay? And faith counteracts the fright. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 3, 7, do be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Proverbs 9, 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 10, 27, the fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Fear is our ego's defense mechanism in the fight or flight response to threat. So fear itself is not bad. You know, fear is a good emotion in the right measure because it's, it's vital in the survival and thrival of human beings. Okay, so... The lower three chakras, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus are ego-based. And the upper three chakras, the throat, the third eye, and the crown are emotion-based, right? All the opposite forces in this earthly three-dimensional existence must be kept in equilibrium to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis is the constant adjustment of the human body to keep conditions stable. Google's generative AI says homeostasis is a self-regulating process that allows an organism to keep its internal stability while adjusting to external conditions. The term comes from the Greek words for same and steady. Okay, homeostasis, same, steady. I say that describes the astrological sign of Taurus, don't you? Describes it to a T. Same-o, same-o, and slow and steady wins the race, right? Anyway, my point is, don't get your panties all in a bunch and feathers all ruffled on your spiritual journey in this physical body. Roll with the punches, you know, like Bruce Lee does. When his punch, he just rolls, stand back up. Yeah, take the path of least resistance. Go with the flow, okay? Don't go against the current. Go with it. This picture here, right, shows vesica circles. My circles is not as perfect as the other one, but I wanted to show you this because I superimposed the Golgotha where Jesus Christ was crucified between two thieves. And these two thieves are polar opposites, okay? But the vesica circle is just two circles that intersect in the middle. And when 
when the two circles intersect, it opens up a portal to a different perspective, right? The middle way where Christ was crucified between two contrasting thieves. But when you turn this on its side, right? The shape here that's formed from the intersecting two circles is in the shape of a fish, which is the symbol for Christianity, right? Yeah, and I also superimposed the seven primary chakras here. You can see the colors, those dots, different colors, okay? The root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, which is the middle, the throat, third eye, and the crown, right? Yeah. So, what I call, this is the soul and this is the spirit of us, right? Integrated by the heart chakra between them. You dig? Okay. Yes, so remember that whatever is going on in your inner world projects itself to your outer world. Okay, your thoughts and feelings manifest themselves in the physical world, in the physical body, right? So think and feel good. Balance and moderation is the key to a happy life. Nature does not recognize good and evil, only imbalance, right? And it seeks always to bring everything into equilibrium just as karma does. What goes around comes back around to even up the scores. Yeah, everybody's a winner in the wheel of life, you know? Okay, so the color of the day is light blue, okay? For the throat chakra. I'm wearing this tank top dress. It has a combination of color, red and blue. This is the color of the throat chakra right there. Okay? Yeah. And I also got my aquamarine beaded dream catcher dangling earring. See? That's also the color of the throat chakra. Aquamarine. My eye makeup is sky blue. Right? And then I thought I'd put this on to match. It's an abalone um, pendant necklace but i kept my orange nails on right for the relationship between the sacral chakra our creative center and the throat chakra our communication center for creative communication right and i also have my mandala here for the throat chakra that i crocheted with the wizard of loops tutorial on youtube i modified it to represent the ether, which is the element of the throat chakra. I represented it with feathers that I hung at the bottom and corners up here. And I added a pink heart in the center, dangling there in the center as a reminder to speak your truth with love and compassion, okay? I can tell how hungry I am because my stomach is growling. The throat chakra is the center of communication, as I said. It's in the central column of light in the human spine. Okay, just imagine this is column of light in the human spine. In Sanskrit, the throat chakra is known as Vishuddha. Vishuddha, which means pure or purification because the throat chakra powers the ability to speak one's personal truth. It is the fifth spinning sphere of energy in our spine right above the anahata to express the desires of the heart as it channels the energy between the lower parts of the body and the head. 
It is located at the level of the neck behind the larynx in the spine. Okay. So this, the throat chakra, is the vortex of vitality for creative self-expression. You know, through song, poems, plays, paintings, and writings, all forms of communicating your ideas and inspirations through any media that you prefer. But be careful with your words, okay? Because words are powerful. So you have to speak your truth responsibly, okay? As in the word of God, the Bible, okay? Quoting scripture can banish evil just as Jesus Christ did to Satan when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, right? Oh well, yeah. The throat chakra powers not only the sending of messages, but also the receiving of information, right? In other words, the capacity of the throat chakra is both the speaking and listening as in conversations and discussions, the sharing of ideas, hearing the feedback, okay? But stress and anxiety can have a negative impact on the throat chakra. It's a block to its ability to function properly. So construct your sentences with words that build up, not destroy, okay? Yeah, edify, don't tear down. Bring people up with your words, lift their spirits up, you know? The sword of the spirit and the armor of God, right here. The word of, of the sword of the spirit is the word of God and it cuts both ways. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Okay? The symbol for the throat chakra is a lotus flower with 16 petals surrounding the circle of consciousness, right? And these 16 petals represent 16 vowel sounds of the Sanskrit alphabet, okay? Some symbols show um, the Sanskrit alphabet decorating those petals. And it's am for compassion, am for forgiveness, im for poison, im for straightforwardness, um, for self-control, um, dynastical pride, rim, sacrifice, rim, pride, irim, nectar, irim, calmness, m, happiness, aim, vociferation, om, vanity, aum, noble nature, am, knowledge, okay? That should be 16 qualities that must be mastered to achieve purity and reach spiritual awakening in your communication, okay? And the mantra is Soham, okay? Soham, like a breath. So at the inhale. Soham. Soham. Okay? So... What that means, so hum, is I am that I am. It's the name that God told Moses to give to the Israelites when they asked him who sent him. In the book of Exodus 3.14, in the New King James Version of the Bible, it says, And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So make time to meditate, pray, and read your Bible every day. Take a break from your busyness and find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Close your eyes 
and relax. You know, by breathing in and out deeply and slowly, right? Get your mind and body to relax as your pineal gland secretes the melatonin, right? And just observe without judgment the energy within you and without you, you know? Just observe without judgment. And relax in God's rest. Get in the gap between your thoughts and stay there in that voidless void just for a bit. Be in that solid, empty space where consciousness begins and never ends like my mandalas, right? The center of the mandala, the magic ring. Go back to the start, the singularity of creation. Nobody said it was easy. It's such a shame for us to part. Nobody said it was easy. No one ever said it would be this hard. Oh, take me back to the start. <laughs> I leave you now with these Bible passages to reflect on today. Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others. First John 3, 18 says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. So that verse there emphasizes the need for Christians to act on love, not just think about it because it's important to communicate love through words, but also through actions, okay? Yeah, that verse uses the Greek root word agape, and agape means a selfless, sacrificial love, God's love, unconditional love, right? So that's all I have for you today. Have a great day. And as usual, I honor God in you and me. Namaste.